welcome to the Midlife Leap, a lifestyle talk show for women in midlife, sharing tips and interviews on topics ranging from business, career, current news, fashion, shopping, health, travel, and so much more. Please subscribe to this channel so you'll receive alerts of new episodes. And like this video so that other midlife women just like you will be alerted by YouTube to check out the Midlife Leap Show. As a caregiver, it can be really frustrating when well-meaning friends and family tell me, take care of yourself, Sunita. You know, make sure you get some self-care. I understand that they're, they're, they have good intentions, but it's often difficult for the caregiver to carve out time for self-care. There's times that I just want to take a nap, but my mind is filled with all of the things that I need to do, or I'm kind of listening uh, to my dad's for my dad dad's movement in his bedroom and I can't relax and take a nap. But here are some tips of what you can actually do to help if you have a friend or a family member who's a caregiver of someone who's ill or elderly. Number one, if you are local to them, offer to sit with the caregiver's ill relative or elderly relative so that he or she can run some errands take a nap, or just take time to do something that's enjoyable. Tip number two, drop off a cooked meal or place an order for delivery. This will give the caregiver a mini break from needing to prepare a meal that evening. Tip number three, Help clean, just something as simple as dishes or coming over to mop or vacuum or run an errand because all these little, any of these little actions will assist the caregiver with self-care, taking out time and caring for themselves. See, every little bit helps. So instead of just saying, take care of yourself, ask them, what can I do? to help you take care of yourself and get some self-care. Are you a makeup, hair, or fashion stylist dreaming of a high six-figure income career working with celebrities and on ad campaigns? As president of the Crystal Agency, Crystal Wright represented some of the most recognized artists in the U.S., including photographers. Her hustle led to some of the hottest fashion and celebrity layouts in leading magazines, national print ads, advertising campaigns, TV shows, and feature films, such as Entertainment Weekly, Essence, Allure, Fox, Sony Music, HBO, and Revlon. She produced hundreds of jobs with celebrities such as Janet Jackson, Will Smith, Simon Baker, Jim Carrey, Alec Baldwin, Britney Spears, and Bono, to name a very few. Today, as coach, business consultant, educator, and author, Crystal Wright has made fantasy careers a reality for thousands of artists. Today, her books, classes, and one-on-one -on -one coaching, she teaches the secrets of working in the beauty, fashion, and entertainment industries. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for finding me and inviting me on. So tell me, when a potential student finds you, what's, I guess, what are the greatest challenges that you find that you have to help them overcome? I think the greatest challenge that I have to help artists overcome is the voice in their head that's telling them, you're not good enough. You can't do this. Nobody in your family has ever done it. This is not a real job. It's the voices that sit on their shoulder that try to make them think that they're not worthy of creating this kind of opportunity for themselves. And also a lot of times it's their families. You know, their families are telling them, well, how are you going to do this? You don't know anybody who's done this. This is not a real job. You need to go back to school to become a nurse or a lawyer or a doctor or something, but certainly not a makeup artist or a hairstylist. Mm, that, I think that's probably the dilemma of creatives. So, cause I heard that as well. Um, <clears throat> at what point does someone know? Cause my audience are mostly midlife women. And of course there's tons of midlife women in the industry on that side, mm -hmm. 
But if she has a salon or, you know, something where she's been disconnected from the celebrity industry, especially out here in D.C. and places mm -hmm. like this, how what are the first steps? Well, first of all, let me just say this. Most of the hairstylists that I've helped started were in salons. Some of them still own their salons. I think one of the challenges and one of the things I let them know is you don't have to give up your salon. If, you're, if your salon is running well, you don't have to give that up as a source of income. But if you want to completely transition into freelancing, then the thing to do is to start dialing back the number of days you work in the salon so that you become more available to do more freelance stuff. The first thing that you have to do is you have to get pictures. Nobody's going to hire you without any pictures that show what you do. And in the past, these pictures had to be uber, uber, ultra professional. And while they still have to be professional, I have a couple of artists that have gotten really, really good at creating a space in their salon and being able to take pictures of their existing clients in a way that doesn't necessarily show their face if they're not model ready but shows their hair in the right light that's good enough that they can take those pictures and put them on their websites and put them on their Instagram to start letting people see the direction that they want to go because you have to have pictures. So are they putting up backdrops? Because I literally have a backdrop in my mm -hmm. office, a couple of lights, ring lights. So are they doing that as well? Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. And then... Sometimes you need a little bit of a step ladder that you keep there all the time. You set the lights up. If you can't keep the lights there all the time, you can put markers on the floor so that when you do open the lights up, that you know exactly where to put them so that you can get a consistent result in the picture taking. And I always encourage people to take a class online. Yeah. Like There's a, a website called class? Creative hmm? A photography class? Yes. Okay. You're going to be taking pictures. You're a hairstylist, probably not a photographer. So you need to know something about lighting in order to take good pictures and consistent pictures. And, you know, one of the challenges a lot of times with artists coming out of salons because they've been attracted to all these hair magazines is understanding the difference between what is commercially viable and what is viable in the salon industry as far as pictures are concerned, because they are two different things. But you can master the kinds of pictures that you need to take in your salon so that you can get good pictures each time. Okay. So you know, at what point would that, that hairstylist find you? Should they get a few pictures under, you know, under their belt first? Well, it depends on where they are. If they're just starting out, the first place to start is with my book, The Hair, Makeup, and Fashion Styling Career Guide. Okay. That's the first place to start because it is the business part of the business. And you want to know that so that you're not taken advantage of. One of the ways that artists consistently get taken advantage of is people tell them, well, you need to do this because you're going to get exposure. But the thing is, nobody's going to see it. But the ladies in the church. And if the ladies in the church are making TV shows, movies, and music videos, that is not going to, doing a church fashion show is not necessarily what you want to do in order to gain exposure. And the other thing is, if somebody says you're going to get exposure and they're not going to pay you, which is not unusual in this business, especially starting out, you got to know what exposure means to you. And it's to, to you, it should mean, okay, if I'm going to get exposure, what does the venue look like? Is there going to be a screen? Are you going to be giving credits? If they're going to be giving credits, you want to ask that your name be included in their credits. If they're going to be handing out a program, you want to make sure your name is in that program. If you have a business card, you might negotiate for your business card to be presented in that program so people know where to find you in your salon in online, in social media. So you've got to define what does exposure mean to me? Exposure means that when the event is over, somebody's going to call you. Okay. 
I like that. <laughs> they need right. your book. Yeah. Yeah, they need the book. And the book is, it's, it's like, if you're listening to me right now and this is okay with you, this is what the book sounds like. <laughs> me talking directly to you. And the book is considered the Bible in the industry. And it has for many years. Right now it's in its seventh edition. Wow. <laughs> right? It's in its seventh edition. So, okay. Um, you know, hello. Right. So, okay. So they're, they're taking photos, uh, possibly doing things for exposure. If, 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 if this person is not in an area like New York or Los Angeles, Atlanta, there's film mm -hmm. that, if my, if my mm -hmm. understanding, what does one do? Cause I'm sure this is in your book. What does one do if they're out of the, those areas? It doesn't make a matter. There, people are doing hair and makeup everywhere. There's production everywhere. There, there's news in your local community. That's true. That's true. Okay. There's news in your local community. There are universities in your local community. There are people having galas in your local community. There are events that may be having conferences that are coming to town. And so what the book does is help you to understand how to market yourself in all of those different areas, how to one, set yourself up. So you're professional. I always say professionalism is a real thing. It's a real thing. You know, what does it mean to be professional? It means showing up early. What does it mean to be professional? It means to have a business card and not the one with your phone number crossed out and the new one you wrote in. What does it mean to be professional? You know what I mean? Having a kit, having it ready, having it clean, because when somebody hires you once and you never get hired back, it's probably because you did something that wasn't professional. Mm. Okay. That's okay. true. But there are businesses everywhere. You drive around locally. There are businesses that are actually advertising that may only have stores in that state. If you look up and see a billboard or a bus side, even real estate firms, what real estate firm doesn't have pictures of all the real estate agents? Who do you think's doing the hair and makeup? Why not you? Yeah, building their experience and portfolios. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Because there are different kinds of portfolios. It doesn't have to be television and film. It could be print, okay? Which is magazines, which is bus sides, which is billboards, okay? Um, uh, it could be e-commerce. Believe it or not, if you're not in the business, you don't even know that in Wisconsin, Target is doing their advertising. You don't know what you wow. don't know. And whatever That's you true. don't know is costing you time, money, or both. Mm. So are clients flying people out still? I know they used Mostly to. Mostly only for celebrities. Okay. If you're, if you're in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and you're working on ad campaigns, are you going to get flown from Minneapolis to LA or New York to do something when, when there are millions of makeup artists and hairstylists? No, yeah, right. but there's work locally and you can build up your portfolio. If your, if your interest is celebrities or if your yeah. interest is fashion, then you might want to start building a portfolio that's going to attract those kind of clients. And then one of the things you can do is start paying attention to what's going on in town. A lot of the times, maybe a famous author is coming to down to speak. Hmm. Okay. An actress is coming to down as part of a, you know, a conference or something. You can find out who the publicist is for that celebrity and let them know that you're available in town. Share your portfolio with them and let them know you're available. And you would love to come and work with that celebrity. And your book gives them that information of how to contact publicists or do they need to do your course for that? Okay. Well, some of it is in the book. The book is the foundation. Okay. Because most people who just read the book are not ready to do celebrities. Okay. But the book is the foundation of marketing. Yes. Putting your portfolio together, getting your promotional pieces together so you can share them with other people, how you should and should not behave and interact and engage with people on social media. It's also going to talk about putting together your resume. All of those things are in the book, right? And then the next step is my Win Now Mentorship Program, which is a 12-week 
online self-paced course that has a live component every single week where I meet with the students every week in a live two-hour session. Wow, that's great because I remember you had a lot of uh, in-person webinars a long time ago, but now you can reach thousands of people yes. from all over. That's yes. awesome. Yes. Wow, okay. So what? how does one determine how they can charge because i'm sure everyone wants that that's in the book that's in the that's book. in the okay. book okay. oh yeah and there's a section in the book called show me the money <laughs> okay show and if they the have money. they have a salon and they're working freelance with your tips and they can easily get to that six figures oh yeah Oh, yeah. I mean, you can get to the six figures. The thing is, people don't actually, most of the time, sit down and figure out what six figures is. Mo a lot of hairstylists are making six figures because six figures, if you're working eight hours a day, five days a week, you take $100,000 divided by 12 months, divided by 21 days, it is, and divided by eight hours a day, it's only $49 an hour. Minus expenses because they got to buy the products and all that. Everything stuff. is minus expenses. Yeah. <laughs> but those expenses are write offs. But those yeah, expenses are write offs. That's true. You got to have some. Listen, if you don't have some write offs, you're not going to get to keep that whole six figures anyway. <laughs> it's true. Uncle Sam is not going to let you keep the whole one zero zero comma zero 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 decimal point yeah he's not gonna let you keep it all the yeah. more expenses you have the more of that hundred thousand dollars you get to keep now speaking of uncle sam is, is that part of your course as well somewhere near the end how to not get in trouble with the oh IRS? yes <laughs> okay girl how not to get in trouble with the irs because guess what people start to think especially when they're freelancing. I mean, I used to represent artists like Nico and that's the only hairstylist, like Clark Vincent um, and some other artists. And I can remember when some of them thought that I'm writing them checks for thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, you work two days and you're making $3,500 a day. That's seven grand. I'm writing out checks. For seven thousand dollars minus my twenty percent, seven thousand dollars, and you spend it all in a week. Wow! Because <laughs> I think a lot of times to some artists, if you're not working in a regular job mm -hmm. and they're not taking taxes out, you think that you just get to keep it all. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and you asked me something about the most difficult thing to convince artists mm -hmm. at the, the first question you asked me, it's trying to convince them that they're actually business people, that they're entrepreneurs. And that means they're their own sales rep. They're their own creative. They're their own agent. All of that long before you put yourself out there, if you want to get an agent, because there are agents in most markets long before you put yourself out there to get an agent, you have to be your own agent. Mm -hmm. I like that. And, and I then think the agent, yeah. the agent is also not your savior. <laughs> Artists get an agent, go home, sit twiddle their thumbs, waiting for their $2,500 booking. Nuts. Nuts. And I'm sure that was a headache for you. And, and also, I've worked with Nico a few times when I was modeling. He was great. And I didn't remember that he actually was signed with you. Like, wow. For five years, I had Nico. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yep. Until I closed the agency, I had Nico. Okay. Yeah. Sure. You probably had a lot of other people that I worked with and didn't recall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had some fabulous artists. Yeah. I had some fabulous artists that I represented. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Cause you've actually opened my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't think about. Like my, my mind was mainly on them needing, needing to go to New York or LA bigger markets. So that right there is worth every penny of your book and your workshop, because that's, I'm sure that's an awakening for a lot of your students. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, artists would come when I was doing my four day live workshop shops. They even before they register for the class, they like, well, am I going to be able to do makeup in Miami? Am I going to be able to do hair 
um, in, uh, you know, in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, one of the hairstylists that took my class, um, gosh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. He passed away a couple of years ago, Antoine Jackson. He was Wendy Williams' wigologist. Oh, wow. And he was living in North Carolina. And I helped him become an assistant for Oscar James. Hmm. And he ended up on the Wendy Williams show, winning an Emmy. Wow. Okay. One of my other artists that took my class and did one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, her name is Lillian Dion. And her Instagram is Hair by Lillian Dion. This is what she just sent me today. Trying to become a. Can Are you, you kidding me? <laughs> no. She just did that with Josh Duhamel. Yes. Wow. Right? One of my other artists that's a hairstylist is on. Um, one of them is on tour with. With Beetlejuice. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Another one is on some other fabulous. I can't even keep it in my head. That is awesome. Okay. So if a potential client wants to reach you and possibly work on these movies or whatever it is that you know they aspire to, how should he or she contact you? You can visit my website, which is crystalrightlive.com. You can shoot me an email. Crystal at crystalrightlive.com. You can visit my Instagram, crystalrightlive.com. Shoot me a DM. I return all of my emails. I return all of my phone calls. Yes. Okay. And I am happy to, a lot of times what I'll do is say, let's do a 15 minute meet and greet. You tell me what you're trying to do. And I will try to give you, not try to give you, I will give you the right solution based on what it is you're trying to do with your career and your goals. Yeah. Yeah. And ladies, she's no joke. I've known Crystal for years. She's about her business and she's definitely about helping people. So reach out to her if you want to take your career to the next level and make your dreams come true. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Crystal, for joining us. You're so welcome. Thank you for having <laughs> me. Bye, everybody.